What's up everybody, welcome to Podcast Now, I'm Alex. In this video, I'm going to be previewing Control. Now, Control releases on PS4, Xbox One, and on PC on August 27th. So this is the next game from Remedy Entertainment, makers of Alan Wake, and more recently, Quantum Break, um, which is a game that was, you know, previously Microsoft exclusive. It came out on Xbox One and on PC, and really so was Alan Wake. We have not yet gotten a game that releases on the PS4 from Remedy in quite some time, so seeing this on the PlayStation uh, quite an awesome thing for me. Control, to me, looks like a super interesting game where it reminds me so much of the games that have come before. It really seems like a Remedy kind of game, that third person, uh, and the way the camera actually works behind you, like the way it's third person, how it's actually behind you, I believe, way more, like further away from you than most third person games. But this game has, I think, all of the, the necessary features to make it a very, very strong game. To be honest, it does remind me way more of Alan Wake than it does of Quantum Break, although the engine is just a modified engine from Quantum Break, uh, but you know, without you know the trying to make a television series out of it. And the reason it reminds me more of Alan Wake is the story and really the elements all together. Now, she basically, the main character, can basically use the Force. Now, she's got more supernatural powers than just using their version of the Force, but she can lift things, she can throw things, she can use uh, kind of the environment to block attack, she can make enemies fire on each other, she can freeze bullets, and and there's some really cool features in this game, but those kind of mechanics, and even when you like attack the other person or you shoot and you kill the other person, um, it reminds me like it looks like the Alan Wake and all like the particle effect, all the lighting, like when you're when you're throwing things and kind of just causing disruption. It reminds me of when you kind of flash the flashlight on the enemies of Alan Wake to then get them, you know, able to be able to shoot. That's what this game reminds me of. In terms of like timing of this game. Really releasing. I feel like it's coming out at a really, really good time. End of August. August, in general, is not the strongest month for games at all, especially this month, uh, or especially, you know, this year. Not go There's not many uh, games here. I think Man of Medan is, is my personal favorite game releasing in August. I'm super, super pumped for that game. Now, Control is a full-price game, so when you compare that with Man of Medan that releases three days later, you may think this is a little bit of a, you know, a tougher sell, but I like what they're trying to do here. This is a class just single player game you know there's not multiplayer features to this game it's a single player story and the kind of supernatural feel to it uh, you know in, in terms of the even the enemies um, them breaking into this uh, this lab that can, that is messing or can mess with people's minds the way that they're setting it up and, and you know and just with the story elements in general does remind me of that kind of you know psychological game that Alan Wake was kind of known for and it's the same right team behind those games. Control, I feel, can be a either very, very average game or will surprise a lot of people and be a very, very strong game. I feel like it could have both of those effects because, you know, when watching it, there's a there's a, a couple gameplays out there, right? And there's like one that's about 18 minutes. I think it's from GameSpot. And I feel like the, the talking parts, some of them just seem very, very boring. They drag on for quite some time. There's like a two, three, four minute uh, talk scene. And it's not like a cinematic cutscene. It's just going back and forth between two characters. I feel like there are going to be aspects of this game that will turn people off. But at the same time, I, I, some of it is just the kind of games that they make. Even in Alan Wake, there were some slower patches to it. Um, and it was kind of like the the environmental storytelling. Alan Wake was, at least. And I hope there's some aspects of that here as well. And I think there are. The world of this game is definitely a character. And what this world can can do and trying to piece it all and like kind of put it back together so it's not just uh, kind of in flux. Uh, that is a really big aspect of this game. But I think a lot of people are going to look at it and say $60 single player only, uh, you know, and maybe not my kind of game. I feel like it looks like a solid enough game. I feel like overall this game can surprise a lot of people. I don't know if this will be the next Alan Wake. I think the bigger question with Control is going to be if it sells, if it does really, really well, 
What does that mean for the future? Because there's constant talk, you know, is Sony going to buy Remedy Entertainment? Is Alan Wake 2, uh, you know, going to eventually come? They just got the publishing rights back for Alan Wake. They've talked a lot about it, how they, they want one day to make it. That's all fine and good. And then what kind of would crush that hope is what if Control sells really well? Would they want to make a second game? You know, they've kind of bounced around. This would be the third game. Would they Do they want to keep bouncing around uh, uh, franchises and keep kind of coming up with random things? Or would they want to double back on a game? And if they do, yeah, Alan Wake is fantastic. But what if Control, they see more potential? And I think that's going to be a really interesting thing to see if that actually happens. But to me, Control looks looks like a fine game in my own personal opinion it doesn't stand out it doesn't like it doesn't like really show itself saying like hey you absolutely need to buy this i have seen a lot of people in the gaming industry that say don't sleep on control you know control from what they've played from what they've seen has looked really really good I think it's looked decent enough. I think it looks like an above average game and definitely coming out in August is a pro. I'm not going to say it's not. It gets out ahead of all of the releases. You know, September, September is a pretty packed month. October, not necessarily as much as it, as October's have been in the gaming industry. Normally, October and November are just, you know, tidal waves of games. Uh, November, absolutely, as there are so many big games coming out in November, really, you know, continuing throughout next year as well. We have some big months in gaming coming and I think a game like Control for full price for a and I think another thing working against it is it's from a studio that's not the most recognized yes Alan Wake is a very recognized game so I mean Remedy I know who they are a lot of people do know who they are but I don't think in the grand scheme of things a lot uh, you know a majority of people know who they are and also it's a brand new game it doesn't ha and I respect that by the way I 100% respect that they're doing a brand new thing and I I applaud them for trying something different. Does it have a lot of aspects and does it look a lot like Alan Wake and Quantum Break and, and, and you know, it kind of feel like those games? Yeah, it really does. I, I don't think they're making something absolutely from scratch. But what game really is from scratch? What game, if, if a franchise has made two different games, what game has radically been different? I think one of the only ones I can think of is like Guerrilla Game Sony. Uh, you know, the difference between Killzone and Horizon Zero Dawn is day and night. There's no difference. But a game like Uncharted and The Last of Us from now you can tell you know the similarities it's not like they built something complete it is completely different but it's not 100% different so I think it being a brand new IP a brand new game control you know I I don't know if that I feel like that hurts it I, I like that I think the it being different is going to be a very good thing but I think in the grand scheme of things you, know, you have Gears 5 Borderlands 3 another Call of Duty another Ghost Recon uh, you know Death Stranding is a really you know a big Big IP, but from Sony and Hideo Kojima, Star Wars, Jedi Fallen Order is a Star Wars. Um, you know, you got Pokemon, you got the next Doom game. I mean, there's and I'm miss, I'm leaving out games. Luigi's Mansion. There's so many games, and they're all built on franchises, or they all have big things behind it. This is like that triple. It's tri it, it it is a triple A game. It's trying to get into that space, even though you know a lot of triple A. The triple A uh, idea is, is not the greatest thing in general, or that kind of uh, place in gaming. So sometimes some bad things could happen there um, but it's trying to be that and I think it wants to be that and it kind of needs to be that in order to sell well um, but it is kind of like if it's I think going to get looked at as like a double A kind of game. I feel like that's what Remedy has always had to deal with. Alan Wake is not the highest selling game of all time. Okay, It's kind of a cult favorite game. Um, it's a game that sold pretty well. It's a game that will get a sequel eventually, but it, it's not, you know, it was it wasn't game of the year. It wasn't the highest selling game of all time. Quantum Break definitely had a lot of problems. I think that was a more high, higher profile game because it was made you know exclusively for Microsoft. Higher profile, but still, I feel like it had more problems now in Wake by a mile. And I think people saw that and said, well... You know, they got their chance to kind of, you know, take this big, big step, and there was a lot of problems there. Yeah, they did a lot of good things with Quantum Break, for sure, but I wonder how that's going to affect Control. I'm excited for Control. I'm excited to have people play it, see how the overall story... I feel like the overall story is going to be a lot better than what we expect it to be. The gameplay, I feel like, will kind of be, like, middling. I, I don't feel like... I feel like the gameplay is the draw here, but I, I have a feeling, at the end of the day, uh, the story is what's going to take this game and put it 
it to a, a higher place, make this game a better game. But guys, let me know in the comments below, what do you think about Control? Are you excited for it? Are you looking forward to it? Are you going to be getting this game? Let me know. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel podcast. Now hit that bell icon so you guys know when these videos go up. And thank you, as always, for watching. I hope to see you on the next video.